Alright, it's a bit noisy around here, but we've got to get the work done while we can. This is 10.1.6, exercise what if question 9. A flask being filled with water at a constant rate, uh, four different bits, and what we have to do is find an equation for the volume at time t. That's what v of t means there. Find the volume in terms of the variable t. So the first one we're looking at, we're told that when v equals zero, when t equals zero, and we're told something else after one minute, so when t equals one, the volume equals four. If you think about a constant rate, that means we've got a linear equation, so we're looking for something that I can write as a straight line equation, mx plus c. c is the y-intercept. y-intercept happens when the variable equals zero. Well, instead of x, we've got t, and so this, the y-intercept is going to be when time equals zero. That's how much was in it to start off with, and this will be the rate at which it's filling. From there, that's an E, somehow that doesn't quite look like an E. So from there, we're going to be able to find the equation pretty easily. If we want to find the gradient, we use the two points we know. Instead of being, well, usually we use y2 take y1 over x2 take x1, which in this case is going to be the same as the volume of v2 minus the other volume that we know, divided by a second time minus the first time. So in this case, I know I've got when t is naught, v is naught, and when v is 4, when t is 1, v is 4. So I can substitute those in. So I've got y2 is 4 minus the initial value of 0 over 1 minus 0. I'm sure you all figured out already that 4 litres per minute is the rate at which it's filling. In this case, we already know c equals 0 because we're told when t equals 0, the volume equals 0. So my equation is just the volume equals 4 times the number of minutes. And I could write plus 0, but there's obviously no need to. And that's it. That's all we need to do. Let's have a look at a second case and see if that one works similarly. Now, just to save space, I'm going to erase those bits there. And we'll go again using the same idea. So we still need the straight line equation. All the rest is the same. Let's go up here. Now for the second question, I'm told some different information. I am told initially at time equals zero, the flask is empty, so we can keep those two points. And after three minutes, it contains nine litres. Okay, well that's exactly the same thing, isn't it? The gradient, the rate at which it's filling, we can find easily. Nine minus zero is nine. This time, rather than being just one minute difference, three and zero, that's three minutes difference. So nine minus zero over three minus zero, nine over three. That means it's filling at the rate of three litres per minute. Again, my initial volume is zero. Therefore, my equation is that the volume equals three times however many minutes have passed. That's how many litres of water will be in there. The next one's giving us different points. It's not giving us the initial value. So let's go again and see what's happening this time. Get rid of what we don't need. Still working with straight line equations. This time they're giving us two points, but they're not giving us the intercept. So after one and two minutes, it has two and three litres. So when t equals one, we have two litres. When t equals two, we have three litres. So we can find the gradient, difference in the volume divided by difference in time, three minus two over two minus one. So that's a gradient of one. But two minus one is a little unclear. Let me just write that again for you. So we've got a gradient of one. So I know that my volume equals one times t plus some sort of constant. How am I going to find that? Sub in a value that you know. I'm going to sub in when t equals one, the volume equals two. Because that's one of the points that I know will satisfy this line. I go ahead and I do that. 
and I get 2 equals 1 plus C, 1 equals C, so my equation is the volume equals T plus 1. And you can see, check the other point, when t equal 2, the volume was 3. So that makes sense. Later on, it's going to ask you in part B, what was the initial volume of water in the flask? You can see it right there. When t equals 0, the initial volume was equal to 1. Because that's obviously what it was at the start. There's one more to go. Uh, let's have a go and see if we can make sense out of the last one. So the last one is the volume after one and two minutes it's 3.5 and 5. So I've got to change a little bit here. Bear with me while I get a cleanish area to write on. It's a little bit easier than writing out the whole question again though, so it won't take too long. So volume equals, let's write it out again, 3.5 and after one minute and when t equals 2, it's 5 litres. Difference in volume, 5 minus 3.5 over 2 take 1. The gradient is 1.5 litres per minute or if you prefer as I would, I'd write that as 3 over 2. But 1.5 is fine, doesn't matter. What would my volume look like? Well, my equation in terms of t is going to be 3 over 2 times t plus c. How do we find out that initial volume? I need to sub in a point we know. This time, I'm going to sub in the second point, t equals 2, because that's going to get rid of that fraction for me. So I'm going to sub in 2 and 5. So when the volume equals 5, I should have 3 over 2 times 2 plus c. 5, the 2's cancel, I've got 3 plus C, subtract 3 from each side, 2 equals C, that's a crazy looking C, so there we've got the volume, we know the gradient, and we know the initial amount, the y-intercept, so volume equals 3 over 2T plus 2. Let's hope that helps, cheers.